Okay, um, this is just a quick test. Um, I'm trying to solve the DVD issue um, connecting. Um, so there's going to be a couple of videos. I'm going to show you a couple of stages um, and then a conclusion at the end. Okay? Okay, ignore the noise because that bloody drive's really noisy. But I, um, I'm experimenting with uh, DVD drives. And I have got plugged in a Samsung DVD. And you can see it's, it's making a racket. Though. That's not the one I'm going to use. Double click on it. See how fast that is? This is running from the vampire. Okay. Um, so that's five and a quarter inch IDE. Now we're going to try SATA through an IDE converter. Okay, now this one is even more interesting. Yeah, CD, reading CD. But this is a SATA drive. Okay. Using my lateral thinking, I've got this little tiny adapter board that goes in and converts it to IDE, which then sits on with the vampire with the ID interface. Um, works brilliantly. So the internal slot load is a bit of a problem because, um, well, I haven't got the right connectors for the back. It has a different um, connector on the back, but at least we know SATA through an interface to IDE works. So that's great news. What, what a nightmare. Um, so the idea is to be able to get this <laughs> slot loading drive to work with the Amiga. Now, if you run it on a PC, it's easy. You get your starter cable, you plug it onto the PC motherboard, connect the power up, and it works beautifully. So it's still a fantastic option to have that lovely slot loader. Now, on the Amiga side, that's always nightmare because we don't have native SATA, to my knowledge. So I'm doing this with a vampire, um, as you've seen. And so what I tried first of all was, I thought, right, well, okay, we'll get this one, which is my Samsung DVD rewriter, and it's an IDE one. Stuck it in. I installed IDE Fix. Bear in mind, I'm running, uh, obviously, as I said, vampire. Should work on uh, other Amigas as well. I was right, I'm running IDE fix, got it working. Five minutes, no problem, IDE. That was fairly straightforward, as you saw in the video. The next one, SATA. To prove SATA works. So this one is just a little black DVD drive. Uh, as you can see, hopefully you can. It's got SATA. And I've got one of these little, um, let me see if I can, so I'm not sure what you can see here got one of these little boards okay one of them and basically it's on the back it's got a SATA port so um, all you do is on the back of the SATA you just literally just plug it in yeah it just plugs in make sure nothing shorts out but and then you plug your ID plug your power all works a treat now again that's SATA yeah <laughs> on the slot loader what a pain in the neck. Because it's got a different size flipping... Um, actually, I'll tell you what. Yeah, let me... It's got a different size one. It's got one of these, which is completely different. You can't put that... Uh, if I take that out there... I don't know if you can see this, but... It's a completely different size. So the ones on the, they put in DVD DVDs, which is like this one... Uh, you can't connect it with this, so you have to use one of these. Now, of course, as you'd expect. Now, that's fine, because I've got one there, when I plug it in, got, that goes to power. This is really badly done, isn't it? So that goes uh, into the DVD, the, the slot loaded drive, that's fine. That goes into power, and then this is a SATA connection. So I bought one of these, which is, I've had this ages actually, which is a a SATA to IDE, and you have two SATA ports which these plug into, yeah? So that one there is to go out, so you plug that into there. That's then connected to the drive. Now, of course, you then have to connect this IDE into your cable, which I've actually hidden away now. I'll put away somewhere now, but it doesn't really matter. So on the end of your cable, every time I try to plug this in, the screen went green. Um, I, I'd actually put it around, to be honest, I had to try it both ways around the cable to make sure, I, well, 
I did that by mistake first one, I didn't blow it up. So, but around the right way the screen goes green. Now maybe someone out there in the vampire community will, this will ring a bell, but basically I can't get this to do what it's supposed to do and have the Amiga be able to pick it up. So I've got a couple more ordered, different type, well similar, just different colour. We'll see if they work. Um, at the moment, um, it's a bit of a problem getting this slot loader to work with the Amiga. Now, if you've done this yourself and you've got exactly the board, could you let me know? Because um, I'm trying to make, obviously I want this to work with my Amiga. Now, again, I can put one of these in. You know, these, these both work beautifully, really fast. But, I mean, you know, they're big, you know, not say ugly, but they're, they're big five and a quarter inch device. Now, to be fair, that's what that bay is for. I put the bay there, right? Specifically so you can put these in. But it'd be really nice to get it working with that slot loader. Um, and I think it's just the community, you know, the, it is SATA. I'm just even trying to see if I can get adapters from that. So there you go, done a little bit of work on it. Uh, I'm just getting on so well. Um, so I know it works with SATA on the big five and a quarter drives, and I think it's probably down to a physical connector. I'm even going to try and hack a different connector, see if I can get it to work with this. I don't know if it's possible, um, but I'm going to give it a go, um, because I only need the data. So there you go. Um, just a bit of an update, because um, just so you know, uh, after the, um, the kickstart, I didn't just stop and then plan my holiday. So, um, um, yeah, there you go. Okay, speak to you soon.